Okay, if we start with this formula, speed is equal to distance divided by time. Remember your two rules, uh, basically for any algebraic equation that you want to rearrange. Number one, to move something, you do the opposite operation. And number two, whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you must do to the other side of the equal sign as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by t. That is the opposite operation on this side. So I have divided by t and multiplied by t. That cancels t out. And you'll notice that I'm left with t s equals d, or distance equals speed times time. Okay. To solve for time, begin with your original equation. Multiply both sides by t. I get distance equals time multiplied by speed. Um, but it's not solved for time yet. Anybody know what I need to do to get time all by itself? No. Nope. It's t times s. So what's the opposite operation of multiplication? Yeah. I'm going to divide both sides by s, which gets rid of it here. Time is distance divided by Oops, speed. Okay. okay, we're going to do the same thing with our acceleration formula. Acceleration is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. Um, when I say final minus initial, I'm figuring out what the change in velocity is. Remember this little triangle means the words change in. So acceleration is change in velocity divided by time. If I want to solve for change in velocity, What am I going to do, guys, to get change in velocity all by itself? It's already divided by t, so what's the opposite? Multiply by t. Multiply both sides by time. Oops. It's not supposed to be a delta. It's supposed to be a. All right, so if I multiply both sides by t, I get change in velocity is acceleration times time. Starting again, same equation. Solve for time this time. Multiply both sides by time. I get What's my next step to get time all by itself? Divide by, no, divide by acceleration. Okay, on the back page, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the graph and I am going to fill in the table. Okay, what is the distance at zero seconds? Zero meters. What is the distance at two seconds? Two meters. At four seconds? Four meters at six seconds, 10 meters. How are you coming up with these numbers? Yeah, I'm looking at the graph, good. Okay, at eight seconds, I'm at 16 meters. At 10 seconds, 16. At 12 seconds, still at 16. What does that tell me about right through here? 
I'm at 16 meters, 16 meters, 16 meters. Have I gone anywhere during this time interval? Nope. Okay, at 14, I'm at a distance of 12 meters. At 16 seconds, 8. At 18 seconds, I'm at 4. And at 20 seconds, I'm back at 0. All right. Now we want to work on answering uh, the questions down at the bottom. First of all, guys, you need to look at this and see that there are basically one, two, three, four parts to this graph. Do you all see that? Okay. So we can treat those individual parts um, as if they were their own little graph. All right. First of all, during which time interval is the walker moving fastest? From four to eight seconds. How do you know? Good. You look for the steepest slope. During which point, or during which time interval, is the walker returning to the starting point? What time interval? I need a, a length of time. From 12 to 20, how do you know that? Because the distance is going down, you're you're returning to the starting point. Okay, from twelve to twenty. What is the speed of the walker at t equals fifteen seconds? Well, fifteen seconds is going to put you right here. Okay. And what I want you to do is you're going to calculate the average speed for this whole section of the graph, okay? Do you all remember that speed is distance divided by time? Yes or no? Okay. So how much does the distance change in this part of the graph? Start at? 16 in that 0 that's a change of 16 start at 12 seconds end at 20 seconds that's a change of 8 what is 16 divided by 8 2 meters per second what is the speed of the walker the entire time right through here? Two. Yeah, two meters per second. This whole time, two meters per second. So what is the speed of the walker at t equals 15 seconds? Two meters per second, because it's in that um, section of the graph that we just calculated. Describe the motion of the walker at t equals 10 seconds, right here. Not moving. How do you know? It's a horizontal line. There's no change in distance over that time interval. Okay, let me ask you a question about here and here and here. Those are all kinks in the graph. Do you all see those? What is happening at those three locations? A change in speed of some sort. Yes. Okay. So here, they they steep speed up. Here, they slowed down and stopped. Here, they started walking, speeded up. Right? Does that make sense? Okay. So kinks in the graph are going to show you a change in speed. 